Hello, Cisco CCNA1 students, intro to networks. Um, I promised I would give you a video that goes over basically what it is you want to do in chapter one. Um, once you get logged in at netacad.com, your Cisco networking account, uh, the first thing that I recommended everybody do, and this was in my last video, was in chapter one, go ahead and download and install Packet Tracer. So you're going to want Packet Tracer because you can do basically almost all of the labs in the CCNA curriculum and prepare for your CCNA using the Packet Tracer Network Simulator. Then the next thing that I recommend you do is do this lab right here, 105 Packet Tracer Logical and Physical Mode Exploration, which kind of shows you that there's different ways of working in Packet Tracer. They tried to, um, usually last time, I was showing you the logical mode, but they've tried to improve the physical mode of the program to try to simulate what it's like to, you know, actually have a real device and put it in the rack and attach cables to it and stuff like that. So it's not so abstract. So it's not abstracted. So I installed the program and now what I'm going to do is you can see here I'm in my C drive in my program files folder inside of Cisco Packet Tracer 8.2.1 inside the bin folder and then I've scrolled down to Packet Tracer and I'm going to I want to pin this to the taskbar so let's see here pin to the taskbar so now that's the latest version of Packet Tracer so if I click here I'll get the latest version remember that when you install Packet Tracer all the versions kind of install separately so you really have to go ahead and make sure that when you're opening up Packet Tracer you're not opening up an older version which may not work with the files you're using so so now right here right away now chapter one it does have all of these sections in chapter one and they're great okay but it's very general very um, introductory okay right how networks affect our lives the different components in the network right like there's there's end devices there's intermediary devices end device being a, a PC intermediary device being like a switch okay there's network media meaning cables wireless fiber optics okay there's peer-to-peer -peer relationships and client server relationships and you know a host a host is a device on the network right a host is a device on the network um, typically we think of a host well it could be anything it could be a server it could be a PC it could be a laptop you name it okay um, and then all of these chapters are excellent there's only a few pages right you can see here just two pages and then like a little check your understanding about diagrams so the most important thing I'm going to say that I want you to do in this week one is right here in section 1.0 install packet tracer and then do this packet tracer logical and physical mode exploration. So right here, this is the PDF of the instructions, and this is the packet tracer file. So I've downloaded it, and I've got it right here in my downloads. So what I'm going to do is I'll open up packet tracer here, and then I'm going to go browse for it. Because unfortunately, if I if I open it, it might not open in the right version of the program. Okay, so here's Packet Tracer. I can check here about, and I should see 8.2.1, and I do. So that's perfect. Now, you may need to log into Packet Tracer with your Network Academy account. You click on Network Academy, put in your username and password, and you're in. Now, let me open up this Downloads. Let's see here, under Downloads, um, uh, Date. So this is old. So I think I downloaded it to my D drive. And I'll go date modified. Here it is. It's downloaded right now into my D drive. And there it is. Logical and physical mode exploration. So you're going to open up this file. And we're going to check it out, right? We're going to check out the difference between the logical mode and the physical mode. Now, these instructions are detailed. And you really kind of have to read through it. It's going to be slow going to work through a project like this. But that's OK right uh, that's okay so um, right so here right where it starts this is the physical mode so the physical mode shows us this geography here this map 
and you've got two cities here, right? And then you can see that there's cabling, right? This is supposed to be a submarine cable going under the ocean, right? With a, a, a midpoint somewhere along the way. And, um, and yeah, and we're going to go back. So let me go back. There we go. So let's take a look at this, right? Um, the network model in this packet tracer physical mode activity incorporates many of the technologies that you can master in the Cisco Networking Academy course, right? It's a simplified version of how small to medium sized business might look, okay? This activity opens in and focuses on physical mode. Many of the packet tracer activities you encounter will use the logical mode. You can switch between these modes, right? Um, however, in certain activities or tests, you may be locked out of the logical mode and have to work from the physical mode. So for instance, logical mode, let's take a look at it, looks like this, okay? So you have here, you have this uh, network in Alaska here, right? And then you have this other network over here, right? You have the cloud here, Warrington, Oregon Data Center. Warrington, Oregon Data Center right here. This is the telecommuter's home. So this is a person's home, telecommuting um, home person, right? Going through the, the public network into the branch office over here. And then over here, you've got redundant links to the Oregon data center at Warrington. Now, if we go back to physical mode, you know, it looks like this, right? So here's Alaska over here, and here's Warrington, right? And then you could click and go closer. So I could click here on Seward, All right? There's the branch office, right? And maybe I wanna, um, maybe I want to, Let's see here, how do I use the, I was thinking I could just drag here, but it looks like I can't. Let's see here, where is, um, oh well. So I have to tell you, I am not the branch office. I am not an expert when it comes to the physical mode. I did not explore the physical mode as much as I should have. Um, this is kind of new to Packet Tracer, this advanced physical mode. So this is really good for me as well, um, just because, well, you know, right here's the wiring closet. I can zoom out, Seward, right, and then I'm back here, right? So uh, my question was, where was the telecommuter here, right? So where was the telecommuter's home here? Um, I know I can click on branch office. I can click on the wiring closet, I believe, and it takes me inside of the wiring closet where I have, you know, a server, a switch, a switch, you know, maybe uh, an access point, um, another server here. I've got cabling on the wall that I can use to cable things together. I've got a laptop and a PC, and, you know, I have things on this workbench that I can drag out, right? So, like, I put this switch on the rack. I can put this router on the rack and then I can grab a cable and I can cable it together. So this is physical mode is supposed to simulate something that is, um, you know, more realistic into how you would actually connect devices together as compared to the logical mode where everything is just kind of symbols and um, it's just symbolized. And then you're, you're making connections from one symbol to the next and then clicking on the symbol. Right. But it's the same thing, ultimately, in other words. Right. So here is this um, access point or, or the switch. Let's look at this switch. OK, which goes to the router. So I can click on this switch and then I can go to the CLI and see the command line interface for that switch or in physical mode. Right. It's one of these switches right here. So I click on the switch. Boom there's the CLI. So it's the same thing really, right? I can still click on the device. I can click on this switch, right? Go to the CLI. There's the CLI. Okay. And, um, and then this guy right here, let's see here. Well, it's going to the router. Maybe the router's not, maybe it's not located here, right? This is the server. Uh, no, this is the router right here. This is the edge router, 
right? I can tell by zooming in, I could see things a little bit better, or I could just click on it and see that this device is, zoom in, right? This is a router right here, okay? And config, this is the edge router, and then there's the CLI, the command line interface where I could enter commands. Okay, so that's it. Now, what you're going to want to do, though, is work through the instructions, right, and go step by step. So part one, right, they're going to have you investigate all the different things, investigate the wiring closet, connect end devices, and go through the whole nine yards. But this is, I really recommend you walk through this and go through it step by step as a first, um, as, as kind of an important thing to do, right? All right, that's it. I will stop the um, I'll stop the recording. Okay, so I'm back in this lab and I'm I'm working my way through the lab. Okay, um, and I'm down here. Investigate devices in the wiring closet. I'm in the wiring closet. Remember, I said basically, you know, right here. I can click on Seward and go to the branch office and go in the wiring closet. Right. And there's these devices. So it says switch to physical mode. You should. Uh, it says below the switches in the rack on on item E is a wireless access point named access point. Wireless access points use wireless connection to connect to other devices. Switch to logical mode. Which device is connected to the access point? So if I switch to logical mode, right here's the access point. Okay, the access point is connected to the laptop through a wireless signal here. But the access point has also got a physical Ethernet connection to the AL switch 2 or ALS2, which is the name of this switch right here. Okay, so right, so then I could so I can answer that question, right? Switch to physical mode. You should be back in the wire closet. Where is the device connected to access point physically located? Uh, laptop underscore one. Okay, so I switch back to physical mode. Right, and I could, well, I'd like to zoom in, right? Yes, I'd like to zoom in. So um, there is the access point. Here is a cable to the access point. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think fast Ethernet zero two. Um, yeah, this right here is the Ethernet cable. Now it should be connected, although I'm not quite seeing the cable connected into it. Um, the device that's connected to this access point wirelessly, okay is right down here that's laptop underscore one right here right this is the device that's connecting you can see the wireless connection right here this is a little wireless antenna and the green light right so that's connecting in to the access point right here now when it comes to this Um, cable there we go there's the cable all right connect end devices to networking devices so let's see here um, investigate the cable pegboard it includes two console cables ten straight through cables four fiber cables two coax cables and two USB cables Switch to logical mode. Notice that the cable representations are different in this mode. Click a copper straight through cable from the pegboard. Float your mouse over the ports on PC1 until you see the fast Ethernet pop up. The other is the, the RS-232 serial port for connecting console cables. With the straight through cable still selected, click the fast Ethernet port to connect the cable. Connect the other end of the cable to AL switch 2 by clicking an empty fast Ethernet port. The cable should now be dangling between PC1 and the ALS2 port. So how do we do that? So, first of all, I'm going to 
I'm going to zoom out and you need an Ethernet cable. So which one of these? This is a console cable. This is a copper straight through cable. So I'll click this cable, right? I could zoom in if I want. And scroll down. And this is the Ethernet port on the PC. I think this is PC01. Yes, it says PC01. And this is the serial port. So I'm going to click on Fast Ethernet, which attaches the cable. Then I'll go up here. AL switch 2 and I can put it to any one of these switch ports. Let's put it on port 1. This is port fast ethernet 01. I'll click there. And there goes the cable. It's you can see it dangling from port 1, right? All the way down to the PC's ethernet port here. All right? So that is what they're telling you to do here. Okay? Um Right. PCs and laptops can also be connected to networking devices using a console cable or a USB cable. So, click a console cable. Click the RS-232 port on PC1. It should be highlighted green. Float your mouse over the router and find the console port. Okay, so we can do that now. So what I'll do is I'll scroll up. This is a console cable. So I'll click on it. Okay. Then I'll go down here, and I'll click on the serial port here, RS-232 port, to connect in that console cable. Now the other end of the cable needs to go to this Edge 1 router in the console port. However, I can't really see where it is, so I'm going to zoom in, okay, and zoom in. And there's the console port right here. This is the auxiliary port. This is the console port, okay. These are two Ethernet cables connected to Ethernet ports, and this is two fiber optic cables connected to fiber ports. So I'll click the console port, and the other end of the cable should go there. So now I have a blue, baby blue, console connection from the administrative PC to the Edge 1 router. There it is. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, all right. install a backup router. So now we go to the next part and what we're going to do is is uh, investigate the shelf, click and drag the backup router to an empty spot in the rack. Um, click the backup router, inspect rear, and find the power button to turn it on. Okay, so if we zoom out, okay, we want to find the backup router. There it is. Okay, so um, maybe I'll zoom out again. Right, we want to place the backup router, which is right here, somewhere on this rack right here. So I'm going to say backup router. Maybe I'll just click and drag it and maybe put it like right here. There it is. I put it right there. Okay. Now I can zoom into it. Maybe I want to drag it down a little bit. No, there it goes. Yeah, so there I have it. No, I kind of wanted it like that so I can see the ports. All right. The backup router, right? If I click on it, I can see the back. Zoom in. There's the back of the router. Or... You could right-click on the router, inspect rear. Here's the rear. We're looking for the, um, the power button. Let's see here. There's the power button. You got to turn it on. Boom. Now it's on. So now I've turned on this backup router. Okay. Um, I had to do it by examining the rear. So you could also just click, there's the button right there. This is the front, this is the back, if you just click on it. All right, let me close this. Uh, how do I get rid of that? Once again, this physical mode is not something that I've spent a lot of time with, even though I've been teaching the Cisco curriculum in Packet Tracer forever. They really improved the physical mode on Packet Tracer in the last couple of years. And, um, you know, and I need to 
up my game on the physical mode. All right, so install the backup router, right? Uh, powered it on. On the cable pegboard, choose a USB cable. On the rear, find the USB port. Click the port to connect the USB cable. The other end of the USB cable to either of the USB ports on laptop one. All right, it's not going to dangle though. The cable will not dangle like the cables did for connections to PC1. All right, so there's a USB cable. I clicked on it. Then um, the router here, right, we need to zoom in. Okay, these are gigabit Ethernet. Um, these look like fiber optic ports. This is Ethernet ports, right? Um, we're going to need the back of the router. So we right click inspect rear, the rear of the router, right? Um, there it is. There's the USB console, right? There's the USB port right there. Click. So there's the USB port. And then I'm going to go down to the laptop and USB. USB zero, click, right? So there is the USB port. You can see uh, it dangles actually. I don't know about them saying it doesn't dangle because I can see it, you know, going to the back of the device. So maybe in the previous version of Packet Tracer, it didn't dangle, but now it does. So that's kind of cool. So the USB has a US the laptop has a USB connection now to the backup router. Okay. Network administrators typically assign a name to network devices. You're going to use a console connection to the backup router. Laptop 1 desktop tab terminal. All right. Let's try that out. All right, so we're going to do that. Let's see this. We're on this part, part five. So I'll click on the laptop. I'll click on um, desktop. These are all my desktop applications. There's the terminal program, the terminal emulator, which is like putty. And click OK. And type no. And you can see that I have a connection to the command line interface. Now, if I want this to be a little bit bigger, make it easier to see, what I can do is, is go to Options, Preferences, Font Size, and then the CLI, I can raise that up to like maybe 12, um, yeah, and click Apply. And now, if I'm in that laptop and I go to terminal and click OK, you can see it's a little bit bigger and easier to see. All right, so now that I'm in there and I type no and then I pressed enter, all I have to do is type in some commands and it tells me the commands to put in. So enable, configure terminal, and then host name edge router backup. So that should be pretty easy. So once again, this Laptop 01 is opened up in a separate window. So, all right, so right here, I will type um, enable configure terminal. That gets me to global config mode. And then I can type in host name edge underscore router underscore backup. Okay, and notice that the name of the router just changed from router to edge router backup. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So I can close the um, laptop window, right? I can do all that, right? Yeah, if I close, if I um, close this window, and I scroll up and click on this router that I placed on the rack here and go to config. You can see that it changed 
the host name to edge router backup. Uh, notice that the display name did not change. Uh, right? There's the display name of how it gets displayed on you know here as backup router, and then the host name edge router backup. Now, if you want to change the display name, you just type it in right here, and you could change that display name, which is under the config menu. And how did I get there? I clicked backup router. Right, but you can see the host name changed. Right, and there's the CLI also. Um, it's like a cheat way to get there. Okay, and then explore the rest of the network. Now, notice check results. Okay, congratulations on completing this activity. Assessment items. I needed to place the backup router. I needed to power it on, put it on the rack, and I needed to change the host name. I needed to set up the USB cable, right, from the uh, backup router to the laptop. The edge router, I needed to connect the console cable to PC1. And the PC, I needed to connect it to a switch port. So you can see here, these items were all done correctly, um, or I did all three items, and so now I got 100. All right, so that's basically walking you through the major steps in this lab. However, I would go slower and check out all the other areas as well and make sure you go over all of the reading and walk through the lab step by step. It helps you to explore the physical mode. There are labs in the curriculum where you only have access to the physical mode. You can't switch over to the logical mode and do this. You see, in the logical mode, right, you know, it, it's... It's, it can be a little bit easier in the logical mode. In other words, right, if I want to, um, let's say I want to delete this console cable from the PC to the router, right, I just click on the background first with this tool and get the X, right, and I'm going to, well, it looks like they don't want me to be able to do that. Okay, so it's locked because this is an activity, it's an exercise, it's a graded activity, right, there's results, you get a grade, Basically, you know, it gives you a completion percentage, right? So what you would do is you would save this file now, file, save as, and you could turn it in. If I make an assignment and say, hey, do this packet tracer activity and turn it in, which I'm going to do, you would save it, maybe put your name on it, right? So here I could put Dan underscore and save, right? And save it to wherever you're going to save your files, right? So I'll just save it right there for now. It's fine. Right? Let's see if it saves okay. I hope it does. All right. Saved okay. All right? I got my initials on. I got my name in front of it. And it's saved. And I can close it now. All right? Do you want to save your work? No, because I already saved it. So anyway, I can now turn that in and I will make an assignment. So in a place for you to turn it in and there you have it.